After a night of imaging, you need to take all of that data and put it together in one file for processing. In this video, we're going to go over a real quick guide for Deep Sky Stacker. So the first thing you're going to want to do actually that I recommend is get organized. So what I like to do is organize by date, object name, or catalog number, and then each file type. So lights, darks, flats, bias, whatever. From there, make sure that everything goes into these folders just to keep things tidy. From there, we want to go ahead and just get Deep Sky Stacker downloaded if you don't already have it. So for those that don't already have it, on the website you click on downloads and then download whatever the current version is. On the next page go ahead and just scroll to the bottom of the update notes for the link to download. I'm not sure why they don't put it at the top but that's the way it is. And then go ahead and run the installer and we'll let it finish. Hi there, my name's Dalen. Here at Aster Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there, all to help you escape the day to day and image the night. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching this video, please do consider giving this one a like. Now let's go ahead and open up Deep Sky Stacker. Okay, once we are in Deep Sky Stacker, what we are gonna do is basically follow from the top down along the menu here and just follow each step. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is open our picture files and this is our lights this is our actual data and what you can do is on a pc if you just select one and then hit Control a and then just go ahead and hit open and then you can go ahead and go through and do the same thing for your darks your flats and depending on whether you took dark flats or bias do that as well for those one thing you'll notice at the bottom here is that your light frames actually won't be selected but all the other calibration frames will show up what you need to do for that is just go ahead and click check all and then all of your light frames show up and if you want to take a preview at anything all you have to do is just click on any one of the light frames and then for this you'll notice that this is an image of the Pleiades that I took last year from here we go and click register check pictures and on this screen I tend to leave all of these checked leaving the defaults is fine uh, the only thing you might want to change is how many pictures it uses so if there is something wrong with one of them that you can't see with your eye but deep sky stacker can pick up then it'll remove those frames depending on how many frames you have you might want to increase or decrease the amount that it saves so for this I'm actually gonna set it to around 75% that way it gets the worst of the worst out of the stack and keeps the best ones the other thing you're gonna to want to do is go to the advanced tab and change the star detection threshold now the way this works is that the higher the slider is the more sensitive it is to stars so if I set it to 98% uh, and then compute it actually detects nothing but if I set it all the way down to 2%, it'll detect a bunch of stars. And the good rule of thumb here is you want it to stay below 500 stars. The reasoning for that is that while it's actually stacking, the more stars it detects, the longer it's gonna take to stack. But if you keep it generally around 500 stars or below, that's fine. I, t I tend to keep mine at the range of about three to 500 and Stacking doesn't take forever, but it is accurate enough. The next thing we'll do is just go into recommended settings and really all of these settings are fine. Later on, as you get into narrowband imaging, you might need to change a few settings there, but everything here is uh, on the same Sigma clipping method, so that's fine. We'll just leave it alone and we won't ever do background calibrations to the colors because we're going to do that in processing later on. You can go ahead and hit OK and then just go to stacking parameters. So in here, uh, standard mode is fine and that is basically if you're just doing deep sky images, standard mode works out perfectly for that. Uh, mosaic mode, you can try that if you're doing some big panels. Um, beyond that, you can leave this pretty much the same. Uh, the one thing I do want to talk about here is drizzle. So if you have a ton of data and you have dithered your images while you're shooting then you can try drizzling this will help pull out some minor details and with this I do want to warn you that if you drizzle your image the file is going to be huge Photoshop might have some problems opening this file pics in sight and Cyril might not but it is just a warning I do want to give you that anytime you drizzle your images the file is gonna be ginormous so take that and do what you will with it. If you want to try drizzling, I actually recommend 
running a stack with and without and then processing both and see which one's better but the drizzled one is always going to be a huge file moving on the other thing here is align rgb channels and final images don't ever do that you're going to do that in processing anyway whether you're in pixinsight or photoshop do that there Deep Sky Stackers Align actually isn't the best when compared to the others. All of these other tabs really, I let Deep Sky Stacker just do the default that it chooses, that's fine. We wanna to go to the output file and then I say create output in the folder of the file list. And what that does is it'll actually put the output in your lights folder. From there, you can move it out to the main object name or num uh, catalog number folder uh, and then process everything from in there but it just helps you find where it's at. Afterwards, you can go ahead and hit OK, and then OK. This page here is just a rundown of everything, and if there are any errors, say you don't have calibration frames, it'll yell. But beyond that, all you have to do is just hit OK, and it starts stacking. And then we're just gonna give it the time it needs to go ahead and stack. All right, so the image is done stacking, and we can see, um, the Pleiades here and the channels are kind of close to aligned but beyond that all we have to do is just go to the folder that it's in and then open it up in our chosen processing program which you know if it's either Photoshop or Pixinsight or Cyril whichever one you, you prefer to use and I do want to go over one other thing real quick and that is just one quick settings uh, that we should go over and that is the raw slash fits settings so for raw if you're just using a DSLR, you can just leave it on bilinear and everything at one. But sometimes there is a little bit of an issue with it reading uh, RAWs in DSS. Now you can also go to the FITS files tab and then just check this monochrome 16 FITS box. And this will help it pick up on RAWs if it's having a problem. The other thing you can do is look and see if your camera is in here. If it is not then generally going with the generic RGGB works out perfectly. They can't put every single camera model out there because there are just way, way too many. So using some generic settings might fix the problem if you're having any issues. But that is it for Deep Sky Stacker. And my question for you today is, have you used Deep Sky Stacker or do you use another program like Sequator? Let me know down in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I do want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.